These pants have these amazing inseam pockets that are quite deep. They have a really large capacity, but the best thing is how they're finished inside. There's no clipping, snipping, raw areas. It's really, really neat. Look at this amazing color blocking. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing and today we are sewing a pair of track pants They are designed for men, that you'll see at the end that they also fit me really really well Also at the very end I'll be sharing some personal things that are going on here This is a men's pattern and I have actually sewn for my son I do sew for him but he usually does not let me photograph, he won't model the photos, I have to respect that he's a teenager but in this opportunity he was okay with it. And this is a new release from Love Notions, it's called Thomas Track Pants. This has been a really popular pattern for Love Notions but for kids, so this pattern has been around for quite a long time. Now it's been made for men. It's a really relaxed fit, straight leg type of pant and you can make two versions, one that is more simple than the other, one just has a front, a back leg, the other one has a few extra pattern pieces for color blocking. It has a long side panel on the front leg that has a curve on the top which I think is really cool and then on the back you can sew on a yoke so there's a top piece and a bottom piece to the back. When you unite these pieces on the side you'll get a really cool curve uniting the yoke with that side panel on the front which I think is really really fun. The color blocking doesn't change the fit so both options will fit the same it's just that one has the color blocking and the other one doesn't. You have these side seam pockets that are in seam and I really, really enjoy this technique. I think I can use this technique for woven styles and other patterns. I just really like the way it's finished inside, that it's super neat. There's no clipping into anything or snipping or any raw areas. It's very, very nice and I really enjoy that. Men usually want to put everything in there. They don't usually carry a handbag. <laughs> Although my son has taken to carrying these messenger bags that they sell for teenagers But they usually want to put things in there and these have a good capacity for that For an extra feature if you want to have a little bit more fun even at the hem on the sides you can put in zippers now if you want them for cold weather you can do them fully lined as well there are instructions for that they are pull on elasticized and you don't have a separate waistband piece to sew onto the pants when you look at the front and the back pieces they just look longer on the crotch area there is an excess length there that you fold towards the inside and that's where the elastic goes makes it super easy to sew on because the Thomas track pants are a new pattern and they are on release they are 28% off from the regular price and that price goes through the 11th of April next week and there's also a little bundle that you can make up for yourself you'll see a little message when you get onto the website that looks like this and if you combine the Thomas track pants with any of the other men's patterns you can get two patterns for $15 which is about a 40% discount when you get them together the Dockside Polo and Henley that's a t-shirt pattern and then you have the game day jersey for men and you also have the North Star Pullover. I have already got a video on my channel on how to sew the pullover, the North Star Pullover. It's one I made my son uh, in 2020, I believe. He still wears it, it still fits him because back then I made it really oversized. And the Game Days jersey, I've made a video for the woman's version, which is the same as the men's. And I'm showing you how to sew the yoke and that overlapped v-neckline. So I already have some content about these patterns here on the channel already. I will leave you the links of all these videos and also my affiliate link if you want to use it to grab some men's patterns so you can make some stuff for your dudes. <laughs> I was also able to write a blog post for you where you can see all the photos, the fitting adjustments, all the important information is right there also. And don't forget to use my code KARINA10 at checkout for an extra 10%. Including when there is a sale, you'll get 10% on top of that. So don't forget to use that. They are very roomy fit. There's no negative ease here, which means that you can make them out of woven and you can use athletic fabrics like tactile, board shorts type of fabric, PK, if you want them for lounging, you can make them out of flannel, you make them out of cotton, like a chambray, that type of fabric. Or you could use a medium to heavyweight knit fabric like Ponte Roma, a cotton lycra, athletic knits, micro fleece. For lining them, if you want to do that, just choose a lighter fabric. If you're making a woven and you're lining it, just use something lighter. And the same for the knit fabric. I'm not making my lined, it's too hot here to anything lined, so that's not an option I'm sewing, but it can be done. Extra notions, you need two inch wide elastic. And if you want to do the zippers at the bottom, you need two of those, 10 inch would be okay. I filmed a little clip of the types of knits I used to make the final pair of pants. I combined three different types of knit fabrics. 
so you can see them now. I'm using three types of fabrics. The main fabric is a quite medium to heavyweight athletic knit, quite stable, very nice. It's made mainly out of polyamide. The yoke is a coated lycra with a denim look that you've seen me sew with in other projects. It's also a really stable knit. It has 92% cotton and 8% spandex and for the pockets inside I'm just using a lighter weight cotton lycra this is 95% cotton 5% spandex the sizing goes from extra small to 5x that goes from a waist of that goes up to a waist of 56 inches and a hip of 58 inches now these are really relaxed feet there's a lot of positive ease here when you look at the size chart finished garment measurements there's about 9 to 10 inches of ease at the hip so they are very very roomy here my son's measurements L for the waist and then for the hips slightly larger than the L between the L and the extra large and just considering the ease and what the pattern says if you're between sizes size down I just made a size large for him the inseam is 31 inches and these are drafted for five foot eight now my son is six feet tall I measured his inseam and it is exactly 31 inches he's got a lot of his height on his torso he's got a really long torso everyone's made in different proportions actually and men you also find different proportions in their bodies too so I knew that the original length was going to be okay now I always plan to make a muslin and I wanted to make him a pair of pajama pants he has only two of them I've made a few years ago and they are just getting really really old so I knew I wanted to make him a pair I had a lot of cotton lycra in red that I want to use up that I know he'll wear as pajamas but he won't wear out even though he loved red when he was younger so I knew I had that fabric and I could make awesome pajamas with that now just empirically just by looking at how all his ready to wear pants fit I always think he would use a little bit of extra length in the back crotch so I just empirically spread the back crotch curve on my back pattern piece not the yoke piece the piece that comes underneath and I added three quarters of an inch and I wanted to test that with the muslin and I made the muslin and my length adjustment for the crotch was perfect and the only thing I wanted to tweak was that I found that the front crotch length was a little long for him so instead of spreading like I did at the back I overlapped at the front by half an inch so that is all the adjustments I made you can see a little graphic here and also I knew just by looking at the pattern pieces and how straight they were I had the feeling that these were going to be a little wide on the leg for what he prefers to wear out although they are perfect for lounging and pajamas so he tried on the red pajamas and on his body I started pinning from around mid thigh down to the hem and taking equal amounts from the side seam and the inseam. I ended up removing one and three quarter inches from the side seam and the inseam like that tapering in both for the front and the back leg. You can see a diagram there and because I was using the color block piece I did it a little bit different on the front pieces and I filmed that for you if you want to try to taper in the leg if that's something that your person likes <laughs> you can see it now. These are the two pieces for my Thomas truck pants. I'm doing the color blocked version so that's why I have a separate piece here. If I was doing the regular front without the color blocking then this would be easier. Basically all I'm doing here is removing one and three quarter inches. This is the inseam and I've just drawn a gentle curve up there up to like mid thigh area on the side seams I also want to remove one and three quarter inches but because I have this color blocking I want to include this piece also so that it makes sense like if I remove from the color blocking then I'd end up with this really thin color blocked area here and I, I don't like that <laughs> So if you multiply 5 eighths of an inch times 3, that will give you 1 and 3 quarter inches. So I'm going to remove 5 eighths from there, 5 eighths from there, and 5 eighths from there. I've chosen an area mid-thigh. I got these reference points from trying the pyjama pants on my son, so I know exactly where to start tapering in. So that's where the muslin comes in, it's really important. So from up there, I'm just tapering in, removing 5 eighths there removing five eighths there on this pant leg also so i'm taking it off in all these sections here on the side for the back piece it'll be super easy i'll just do the same thing that i've done here just remove one and a half from the bottom on the side seam and the inseam because the back piece is just one piece it doesn't have this color blocking but that's basically all i'm doing to taper the legs in sewing you use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and I'd say that the side seam needs to be done on the sewing machine I think you'd have a better accurate result there sewing the pockets 
and the side seam there with the sewing machine. Although for the whole rest of the garment construction, you can use the serger 100%. We are focusing on the side seam pockets and how the waist finish comes together, but you also see general construction here. So it's a fun one for you. And pay attention to the pockets because these can work not only for these track pants, you can use this type of method for other pockets that you might have with other garments. You might need to tweak the seam allowances a little, but the technique would work and it's so, so neat inside. So let's see. I have some extra pattern pieces for the Thomas track pants because I'm doing the color blocked version. If you're doing the simple version, you would just have a back piece and a front piece and the pockets. That's all. I'm choosing the one with a yoke and an extra side piece here on the front. So that's why you see other pattern pieces that are extra. But it's only five of them and I think it's going to look really cool. Side seam pockets. I've got four of these, two per hip of course. This is just some general construction, putting the main pieces of the legs together, front and back. Here you see me surging the back yoke to the back leg, super easy, it's slightly curved, but it's easy to put together on the serger. After doing that with both legs, I decided to top stitch that down, just to keep the seams flat and to highlight that difference in the blacks. I think that's gonna look nice. And then we have the long side panel of the front leg, has a little curved section that could be a little fiddly, but just take your time and do it slowly on the serger once you get past the curve it's just a straight seam so once we've done all the color blocking then we can just treat the front and the back legs as one piece and start working on the pockets this is the front leg this is where i have the color blocking but if you don't have the color blocking then just ignore that from the waist down you'll find a little notch i've got it marked with a pin this is where we put the pocket bag right sides together now to make life easier i have surged the edge of the pocket i have surged all this curved edge of the pocket and I've also searched the side seam for both the front and the back. It's just going to make it easier down the line. We're just going to pin the pocket right there where that mark is. Putting my pin half an inch below the edge and also here at the bottom half an inch before the edge. So this is what we're going to sew now from here to there leaving half an inch left over here on both sides. And this is sewn at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, this is the front leg, pocket has been sewn, these are right sides together and I'm going to repeat the same with the back leg. This is the side seam of my back leg and I have the yoke piece there but it is optional, ignore it if you're just sewing a regular pant. And we're also going to take a pocket bag and put it right sides together here, pin it from this mark and do the exact same thing I did with the front pocket. Okay, so here we have a front and a back leg with the pockets already sewn. This was sewn using a quarter of an inch seam allowance only and remember we have a little bit left over here that hasn't been sewn. That's important for later. So now we need to line these up. If you're not doing the color blocked version then you don't have to worry about this that much but I do want my color blocking on the side to match. So at half an inch from here I'm gonna put a pin right through where that seam is and I want it to match this other seam over here so that the color blocking works. What we need to sew now are the side seams and they're going to be sewn in two sections from the top from the waist up to here which is the same place where we had sewn the pocket so about half an inch below from the edge of the pocket. I can see where my seam is so I'm going to put a pin. I'm going to sew from there to there but this time we're using half an inch seam allowance. That means that the pocket bags once everything is sewn are going to be tucked inside and you won't really see them. That is the first little step and at the bottom it's the same. Because I have seams here with the color blocking I'm actually going to start sewing my pocket just above the color blocking just to make that area stable. I don't want there to be a pocket opening where all the bulk is because I think that would gape open. So where I have the seam of the color blocking pieces, I'm going to start about three quarters of an inch above that. So around there, I'm going to start there, catch all this color blocking area and then just sew all the way down to the hem. These are still open. Don't try to close them up in the next step because that comes much later. So first little seam here at half an inch. Make sure to reinforce there. Now from there where I determined a little bit higher than my color blocking, I'm going to start there and go all the way down to the hem. This is 
is how this looks like when you want to press the side seams open so up to here you have a regular normal side seam over here too but here we have the pocket area you can see here that you have a bit of the main fabric there and that's because the seam allowance used to sew the pocket on was only a quarter of an inch but then the seam allowance that we're using to sew the side seam is half an inch which makes the pocket bag lie inside which is really nice because it hides it so we're just gonna press this like this and you can see the pocket opening has the main fabrics but the pocket bags are gonna be tucked inside this leg that I have on the top is the front leg this is the one that has the color blocking on the side what we need to do now is from the right side we're gonna top stitch this like this from the right side onto the front leg we're still keeping the pocket bag that's on the back out of the way okay we just press the side seams open underneath we have the pocket bag here and the pocket bag there they're not together this is the front leg here so what we need to do is sew from where the pocket opening starts just like this just a straight seam not across like that that comes later just a stitch like that that will hold the front pocket bag in place i have that horizontal pin marking where i'm gonna sew remember your back pocket piece is all the way there it's all tucked away And I'm going to stop where this other pin is. Now we can turn this to the wrong side again. And now we're going to take our back pocket bag and just bring it forward. Cotton lycra is annoying because it wants to curl and all of those things. But just match them up. They have the same shape and size. Now we can finally close this pocket bag. We have a bit of freedom up here because we didn't sew those pockets all the way up. So I'm going to catch them there and sew, sew, sew and finish over here. I think I have better access with the sewing machine than if I tried to do this with a serger. That's why I searched my edges separately beforehand and now I'm just going to do this with the sewing machine. I'm going to be sewing this pocket seam with a small zigzag, not a shallow zigzag, a small one so that it has a little bit more stretch to it. My son's going to put his phone and things in here so I want this seam to be able to stretch and give so the stitches don't pop out eventually. Now we're going to push the pocket towards the front of the leg because that's where it's going to be. So when we flip it this way, we have the pocket under here and this is the front leg. And now having all the layers underneath, we're going to do a bar tuck here and here. And that will close off the pocket and keep it all towards the front. Before we had just done a little seam right there. I'm using this width and this length so the stitches are really, really close together there. Pocket bag in there and this is holding all the pocket towards the front leg. That's how it looks like on the other side. This is how the pocket looks like inside. After sewing this together, I've come over here and given it a good press. I love this technique because you have open side seams on both sides. That means that you don't need to snip into anything. Everything under here is super neat. There's no raw areas, nothing ugly, and it's just super pretty. Here you can see the bar tacks that we've already done, and you can use this method for other projects, any woven skirt or pants. You can do it like this. It's the same technique. Just leave the side seams open like this, and it'll be so, so neat. No need to snip into anything. From the right side, the pocket bags here are tucked inside because we sewed that with a quarter of an inch but then this seam was with half an inch so I think it looks really really neat it's quite deep it goes all the way down to here so it'll hold something really securely the opening is large enough for your hand but not so large that it, things will gonna fall out and I love this color blocking color blocking that comes from the front and starts where that yoke is going at the back I think is really really cool Here's one of the pant legs finished with a pocket and everything. Now this looks super long and it's because there's no separate waistband that will be folded under at the last stage. So don't think the crotch is that long because it's got a huge chunk less right there. What we need to do now is take the other pant leg that is also completed and put them right sides together. All we need to do now is sew the front crotch, sew the back crotch. Once those are sewn, we sew the inseam. Okay, I've sewn the crotch curve, the back, the front. And now all you need to do is put them like that and now you have the inseams that you can sew all in one go. I have two inch wide elastic and I've measured it against where my son wears his pants which is below his belly button like most men <laughs> and quite snug. I'm just going to sew these two ends together with a huge zigzag. So it's huge but close together and it's really firm, it's going to hold everything in place. 
and it's super flat i like this better than overlapping the elastic i don't want this joint to be anywhere specific so i'll just leave it at the back somewhere and i'll just divide my elastic into four and then the edge of the elastic is going to be sewn directly onto the top of the edge of the waist of the pants so the elastic won't move or twist or go anywhere so there i have my four pins here i have the waist the fabric is wrong sides up you can see the seam there and I'll just match up the pins with the side seams. Look, in these pants, the width, the front and the back is the same. So the side seams are actually a reference point. So this pin will match against this side seam. And then we're going to serge the elastic onto the edge of the pants directly. And I'll be stretching the elastic to match as I serge. Got a few stitches done here. And now I'm going to start stretching the elastic making sure everything is together the raw edge underneath and the edge of the elastic and i'm trying not to trim any elastic away it's super easy to do it this way there's no separate waistband or anything it's really really easy that's one quarter done and then we have the next and we just do the same thing until we're done on the other side if you don't have a serger you can do this with the sewing machine and just use a large zigzag i have done that in the past years ago when i didn't have a serger so it still works Okay, so that's sewn that's how it looks like on the other side now i'm just going to fold these here make sure the seam meets the seam inside and i'm going to put a few pins just for basically matches with the seam right here i don't want this to end up twisted because that can happen when you're top stitching something that you have to be stretching as you go now to top stitch i'm just going to use a straight stitch i've lengthened it to 3.5 and i'm going to start on one of these points here and i'm going to just be careful because i'm going to be stretching this as i sew so it's a little fiddly i'm going to be sewing against the inner edge there of the area you see surged Okay, that's how that looks the elastic is not going to twist or anything because it's been sewn at the bottom there but i'm going to give it two more rows of top stitching just to keep it flat here's the first thomas track pant i made and i made them as pj pants he does need pj pants so this is great the fabric is very soft and this was perfect to test the fit to test everything really so there you can see that the waistband is not a separate waistband it's just folded in and top stitched with elastic you saw how that was done i added only one pocket to his pajama pants he especially wanted one he's like please put one pocket at least because i've made him some in the past that don't have pockets on his right hip he has a pocket there so that's nice <laughs> nice for him at the back you can see the yoke pieces i wanted to test everything about the version i was going to make because i wanted to make the color blocked one so that's nice there is the yoke right there there you can see the curve of the color blocking piece from the front leg i thought it would be nice to see it so i did that in black and then it's just a straight wide leg him through the twin needle now i knew just by eyeballing the width of the leg pieces that it looked really wide and i know my son likes tapered pants because that's just what he likes <laughs> so why not customize while he had these on i was able to start pinning where i wanted the leg to start getting a little narrower so that's what i did with that so super super great to make a muslin so i was ready to go ahead and make my final pair but this is super nice it fits really well it's going to be comfy has a pocket so they are just awesome awesome pajama pants these are the first thomas track pants i made for my son they are a muslin so i made them as pajama pants in red and black cotton lycra i used the color block version and this is a success i used this muslin to tweak some changes to the crotch length front and back and also to change the leg width a little bit for the final pair the pockets are really nice he really wanted one even for pajama pants so i added one pocket to the right hip as reference he's 15 he's six feet tall and the original 30 one inch inseam fits him perfectly these are the final pair i have two shades of black this is a cotton lycra but with a denim look that i've used in my projects before i have a lot of that yardage and i think the color blocking is really subtle 
So I love that look of the yoke at the back. I made sure to have these themes match. And then on the side, that curved piece matches exactly the yoke. I took special care that that did end up matching because I didn't want that to be not in the same level. It's supposed to match. But you do have to think about it, match those seams when you're sewing. This color block piece goes all the way down, just sidewall, just a different tone of black. I did top stitch that. And then it goes down into a more tapered leg, as you can see. Exactly what he wanted. I took the width out with him wearing the pajama pants, so I knew exactly what he needed. The back is just one piece all the way down. There you can see the elastic has been top stitched, two rows. This is so easy to do, you know, you don't have to fiddle with a separate waistband. It's all included on the top and it's just folded under and it's super comfy. And for this one, I have pockets on both sides. He especially wanted two pockets. So we have the nice deep pockets in there. I really like the way that they're put together inside. You saw that everything was so, so neat. There is an option of adding a zipper here on the hem, which I didn't do it in this opportunity, but I might in the future when I make him another pair. I think they're really nice. I think the color blocking gives it that little bit extra. And I really like the combinations here of the blacks. I think it's a classic and I know he's gonna love it and wear it a lot. <laughs> These are my son's second Thomas truck pants. I tapered in the leg according to his wishes. We did that by pinning in the inseam and the side seam with the muslin. I used two types of black fabrics here for a subtle color block contrast. The yoke at the back looks really cool. The pockets are amazing. I love the way that they are sewn. It's so neat inside and they have a good capacity. These are great, super comfy pull-on. I'm just ecstatic. I got to make something for him and that he allowed me to photograph and video the garment on, which is a miracle actually. As reference, he's 15, he's six feet tall and the original 31 inch inseam fits him perfectly. Now, considering that these pants are drafted for five foot eight and the inseam sort of matches mine, I was just super curious to see how they would fit me. So I did a sneaky try on as well. I mean, we are family here. He's my son, I'm his mother. I can try on his clothes. <laughs> I just mentioned that. And I tried them on and they actually fit me perfect. They fit amazingly well. It is a style that is not my typical style, but seeing how well they fit and how comfortable they are, I would consider making myself a pair. The only change I would make for me is remove this waistband that is folded in. I would remove that length from the top and then add a comfy yoga waistband. That is usually what I prefer for myself. And that's a super easy adjustment I could make to a pant like this. And I keep the tapered leg, everything the same. And it could be such a great lounge pant or just a pant to go out for a walk when it's a bit chilly. These are actually my son's Thomas truck pants in size large. I'm actually five foot eight. I match the height that these patterns are drafted for. I would do a few tweaks if I was making them for me, maybe in the back leg, take some width out of the side. Otherwise the crotch length, everything feels really, really comfortable. And actually I would consider making myself a pair. These are not mine though, these are my son's. I'm just sneakily trying them on before he gets them. <laughs> After trying these on, I think I would definitely size down to a size M. Just because of the style, I would like them a little closer to me at the hips. It's not that they're super wide now, but I could use them a little bit closer to me. And also my husband, he tried them on. These are size large, definitely too big for him. My husband is about an inch taller than I am. Martin is six feet tall. He's, yeah, he's just way bigger than us. So I could use with printing out another pair in a size M and making myself a pair and making my husband a pair. I think that could be totally doable. And actually my husband has zero clothes like this. He just doesn't have clothes like this. He goes either from jeans or work dressy type pants and that's it. He doesn't have anything in between. So it could be good to make one for him as well. Don't forget to check out the track pants and maybe think about getting them as a bundle with one of the t-shirts or the pullover. Remember, my links are always down in the description box. And now for some personal information I said I was gonna share at the end. I've had to stop this video and record it in little bits. I've also had to do the editing process in little tiny chunks. It's taken days and days and days. And it's basically because I've been really sick. <laughs> I actually went ahead and um, had a few hours of observation in hospital and had a test and I am actually COVID positive at the moment. I am not one of those fortunate people who have a COVID positive test and are asymptomatic. I have been totally wiped out. Um, I'm coughing, I've had fever on and off. I think 
it hasn't come back for over 24 hours so I'm hopeful that it's not coming back um, just aches and pains all over my body and just extreme exhaustion so getting this video up has taken a considerable effort and I think once this video is up I won't be around here for a couple of days I just cannot think about going to the sewing machine right now thinking about it makes me really exhausted I'd love it if you consider myself and my family in your, in your thoughts up to now my husband and my son are totally healthy they also got tested and are totally negative so that's good I'm trying to stay isolated from them inside the house which is really sad because we are a very close family we're always together so yeah I'm just hoping this goes by and I can feel better soon that's it from me I hope you're well and healthy and I hope to see you again in a few more days I have to rest up bye <music>